I'd like to welcome everyone, myself, to uh, the Northwest Congregation here this morning, and um, like to express my appreciation, Sharon's appreciation, for the time that we had last night at the Cobo home to get together and to enjoy fellowship. And uh, uh, David, those horseshoes are at least 10 pounds heavier than what they were when I was younger. <laughs> you want to talk about pain in the arm this morning? Ah, two Tylenol took care of that. Uh, but uh, really a good time, and then here we are this morning, uh, gathering again on the first day of the week, which is the Lord's Day, and a time when Christians come together to meet in His name by His authority and to honor Him and to glorify Him in the way that He has prescribed. And uh, certainly an honor to be here. Uh, David and I have the privilege and the great responsibility during this particular time to share some lessons, uh, to lead our minds together in thoughts that would be helpful in our Christian growth. And that's exactly the point of our lesson this morning as we wanted to uh, look at some areas of spiritual growth, focusing in on our spiritual health. So we go to 3 John to our scripture reading and invite you to go back there and notice again those first three verses, 3 John. This is the shortest book in the New Testament, and it's special because what you have here is in a personal way, John is expressing himself in these words to his friend Gaius, and he is... Um, concerned about his physical well-being as well as his spiritual well-being. And uh, these are some points that I bring to you again, as was read in your presence, uh, emphasizing his concern. First of all, he prays in verse 2, he prays that, that all things may go well. Uh, literally meaning, the New King James says, I pray that you may prosper in all things and literally means to be led along a good road. Literally means that in the Greek, to be led along a good road. So he's praying that Gaius will prosper and will succeed in everything, just like we do. We have best wishes and for people, especially that we know and love and our family. We, we, we pray the best for them. We want them to succeed. We want them to prosper. But then the second thing that he says here in verse 2 is he prays for Gaius' physical health. And certainly that's another area of concern that we all have. We want to be healthy individuals physically. We want to be able to, to do the work of the Lord. We want to be able to do the things that we can to enhance and influence others in our Christian walk. And so he prays that uh, Gaius will be in good health so that the work can continue that he is involved in. And the third thing that he prays about, he says, just as your soul prospers. He's praying for his physical and his spiritual well-being now. Directly related to that because you can continue reading and you can see directly related to his spiritual health is how well Gaius is continuing to follow the truth. How well he continues. He says in verse 3, I greatly rejoice when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. Now, folks, I'm, I know that we're all concerned about our, our physical well-being, our physical health. We want to make sure that we, that we eat right, you know, as growing up time we were concerned i mean mom would always say you know make sure you get those green beans i love green beans to this day probably never would have touched them if mom hadn't encouraged you've got to eat your green beans your vegetables you know so we want to eat right we ate right last night i think uh, especially that cake and ice cream oh well that that came in last there uh, but we, you we, you want to eat right because your your body your physical body uh, has to have nutrition. It has to be ready for every good work. And of course, when we talk about physical health, we want to get that exercise. 
Well, I think we did that last night too. At least some of us, maybe we went a little overboard, but I'm not going to call any names out here this morning, but we kept at it last night for a little while. I had to take another shower this morning, of all things. We worked up, we worked up a good time. So we want to get some exercise. Maybe you go out and you walk a little bit, or, but you try to keep healthy as far as your body is concerned. And when it's time to go to the doctor, you know, you have an annual checkup, you go to the doctor. You go to the doctor and, and, and you take your medication, Maybe on a regular basis, every day you have a, a pill or two to take, so you, you take that. And Jules, if you're going on a mission trip, guess what? You might have to get some shots. Why? Because your physical body says, you know, you've got to be able to, to get your shots. Maybe you come from a different country and you've got to get shots to come into the United States too. So we do those things that will enhance our physical well-being. But how about our spiritual health? How about our spiritual health? You know, our spiritual life begins with a brand new birth. We begin to walk as a baby would walk, you know, start to crawl. And and then we begin that new life, this spiritual life, a spiritual walk with a new birth. But then what happens after that? We begin, we might begin well. But are we growing? Are we maturing? Are we healthy when it comes to our spiritual life? That's the focus that I want to look at for these next few minutes this morning. As we are proactive, shall we say, in our physical well-being, Shouldn't we be even more proactive in our spiritual well-being? I'm not a doctor. Uh, I I did serve in the military as a hospital corpsman, so I have a little bit of knowledge, just enough to make me dangerous right now. (laughs) But I'm not a doctor, so when when I don't feel well or when I have a problem, I go to the doctor. You do too. You have regular doctor's appointments because you're concerned about your physical well-being. You want to keep in good shape. So I go to the doctor just like you, and and, and I, I take my medications, and I do those things if I'm not feeling well, and then I go to the doctor, and he writes out prescriptions. He gives me instructions on what I need to do in order to regain my health, in order to feel better. For spiritual health, I need to do the same thing. I need to go to the doctor. He's called the great physician. And so I go to the great physician, and guess what? He has prescriptions for me and for you. The great physician has a prescription because he knows, just like my physical doctor, he knows what's best for me. I have a history, I have a medical history, you have a medical, you have a chart, you have, you have written out orders of what you've done in the past and you, you can see on a chart where you've been and where you are now and what's been prescribed and what's been done for your physical well-being. And we go to the great physician because he knows what is best for my spiritual well-being, for my growth, spiritually speaking. So, this morning, are you ready to go to the doctor? That, you know, on Sunday morning, that's probably the last thing on your mind. You know, well, i got to go to the doctor. But I'm asking, are you ready right now to go to the doctor? And you see, we, okay, so we're all ready, and we're ready to go to the doctor. And when you're not feeling well, when you see there's a need, and that's the first thing that we're not really going to delve into this morning, but you must see a need to go to the doctor. You don't go to the doctor. You don't get up and say, oh, man, it's Monday morning. I feel like going to the doctor this morning for no reason at all. You don't do that. And especially a dentist, you don't do that. And I don't know the congregation well enough. I hope we have no dentist here because, I mean, no ill respect. But I don't like going to the dentist. 
But here we go. We've got, we're, it's time for us to go uh, to the doctor to visit. But here's the, here's, the, here's the problem we have. Turn to Matthew chapter 28. When we talk about going to the doctor, there's a problem because some go to the doctor, and I may be talking to you this morning, and you may be in this category. You may go to the doctor... And you may get the prescription here. It's all written out. You go to CVS Pharmacy or, or some other pharmacy. And you go to the pharmacy and you get your prescription. You get the pills. You go home. And do, but do you follow the instructions? You got the doctor's orders, but do you follow? You know, I know people who don't follow. They, oh, that man, he doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm not going to do that. I know that, saying. But you see, spiritually speaking, in Matthew chapter 28, notice with me, 18, 19, and 20. You know these verses, but you know, Jesus, all power and all authority. The great physician, all power and all authority. He said, go and make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then he said this, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded. You can't go to the doctor with an attitude like you're going to K and W. You can't do where you can pick and choose. You don't get to, when the doctor writes an order, he means for you to follow those instructions, for you to do them, for you to take that shot, for you to take those pills to do that exercise. Now. What are some of the prescriptions that the doctor, the great physician, would give to us? First of all, i give you these suggestions this morning. First of all, he may write out the prescription. He may say, here's what you need to do. You need to build up your immune system. You need to become stronger and able to do battle against some of those diseases that are out there. That's what you do when you go overseas. Sharon and I have been in, in places where you, we've had to get our shots before uh, getting on the plane and going there because you, it makes you stronger and, and there's less chance of infection or a problem that you may have. And the same thing is true spiritually. We have to build up our immune system. This helps us ward off those infections. You say, what infections? I'm talking about temptation. I'm talking about things like false teaching, persecution. These things are in the world that we, we have to fight off these things. These things are going to come. Because we don't live in a bubble. Because we live, and you've heard this before, we live in the world, but we're not to be a part of the world. And because we live in this world, there's going to be temptation, there's going to be persecution, there's going to be false ideas out here. And so how you deal with them, we need to build up our immune system because you cannot avoid them. You're not going to avoid temptation. You're not going to avoid false ideas, teachings in the world. It's going to be out there. And it can affect you. So how do you do that? Realize that it's not going to change. You have to be made stronger in order to live in this world. I like the words of Jesus in John chapter 17 as we go there because you cannot avoid living in the world and neither could those earlier disciples that he called. And John, I said 17, but back up with me in John chapter 16 and notice verse 33 where Jesus, the words of Jesus, he said, these things I've spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In me you may have peace. Peace, the opposite of turmoil. In the world, you will have tribulation. So you need to be strong enough to be able to battle the tribulation that's in the world, the testing times, the temptations. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be a good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus, in a world of darkness that he lived, like in the dark world that we live, he is the light. And he says, in me, in me is where we have victory. 
In the world you have tribulation, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And when we are in him, we become overcomers. He says later on in this uh, chapter 17, um, in verse 13, he says, I, I come to you and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. You can still live confidently, peacefully, abundantly in this world because of Christ, because of following after him. I've given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world. Verse 14, we're not of the world. We live in the world, but we're not of the world. And so we need to be prepared, spiritually speaking, like we would be physically speaking, to be prepared for the world around us. I do not pray, verse 15, that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. James says in James chapter 4 and verse 7, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Have to have that mindset. I like the promise, and I know you do too. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, a great promise is given to us as we live here in this world. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted. Beyond what you're able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. And then John, in 1 John chapter 2, and verses 15, 16, and 17, says, don't get too used to this world. That's my phraseology. He says, don't love the world. Or the things in the world. If anyone loves the Father, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. But the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. You know that song, this world is not our home. I'm just a passing through. This world is not our final home. This is a place that we prepare for heaven. And so we have to do the very best that we can to build up our immune system, to avoid the trials and temptations and testing. They're going to come. You can't avoid them, but you can deal with them successfully, but only by taking the great physician's orders. And the second thing that I would suggest comes from Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6 and verses 11 and 12. Hebrews 6 and verses 11 and 12. For the writer here says, We desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. You keep at this until the end. You keep following Jesus. You keep walking in the light as he is in the light that you do not become sluggish. And our terminology is don't get lazy. Don't get lazy in this. Got to keep at it. Imitate those who through, and this is what it takes, faith and patience. Faith and patience inherit the promise. With that exercise, and that's the second thing we need. We need to build up that immune system because we live in a world we can't avoid some things. The second thing is we've got to exercise, just like our physical body. You've got to get some exercise. I don't do the same things at my age. Uh, look it up in the directory. You can figure out my age. But I don't do the same things that I used to at 29. But I still try to get some exercise. I still try to do those things that that are preventative and things that will help keep my body strong. Well, spiritually speaking, we need to exercise so that we don't get lazy. We need to keep busy. And what am I talking about? Well, Ephesians chapter 2 
Ephesians chapter 2 says that we have been created in Christ. But notice the last part of verse 10. Ephesians 2 and verse 10. Where his workmanship were created in Christ for good works. That God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That walk means it's, it, it comes in the Greek. It's a habitual tenor that we live a life that's filled with good works and, and quite evident, good deeds. We've been saved to serve is a good motto some people have said. So we need to walk in good deeds, but not only that, we need to exercise ourselves. And Paul writes to Timothy about this in 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse uh, 7 and 8. He says, reject profane and old wives' fables. And here he says, exercise yourself rather to godliness. There's your exercise. And then he says in verse 8, bodily exercise profits a little. But godliness is profitable for all things having promise of life that now is and of that which is to come. That godliness is something we can exercise ourselves in. That the Christian character and the devotion that is evident in our good deeds and our actions and our attitudes where we, it's evident that we fear God and we love God. Godliness is all about God and God-likeness. And, and Christian character and having a life that is centered on God and focused on Him. Well, we just sang the song, Holy, Holy, Holy. Uh, uh, and Jason just mentioned in, in our Hebrew class, perfecting Milligan, uh, I believe you referred to for the commentaries, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And live a life that is that is, we don't do things. We're separate. We're different. We're holy, set apart for God's good deeds, for his work, and for his service. And at this congregation, I haven't been here that long, but I know enough from reading and looking and talking that there's enough good works and, and good things that we can be involved in, whether it's in evangelistic, whether it's in edification, whether it's in benevolence. There's things that we can do to be involved with to build up the body, specifically this body at Northwest. So, yes, when we go to the doctor, he'll build up that immune system, get, get exercise, but, uh, of course, there's something else you need to consider. And I'm going to get amens on this one. There are times when we need to rest. I'm not talking about, you know, regular, but I mean, I bet you most of us, unless you work 11 to 7, we, we slept last night. The majority of us, we, went, we slept because the body needs some rest. That's not unusual. There are times where you have to rejuvenate, where you have to refresh, refresh and replenish yourself. Uh, that's not unusual in biblical times. Uh, you remember in Mark chapter 6, uh, the, the apostles, they had been working, they had been teaching, and um, notice what Jesus said in Mark chapter 6 and verse 30, 31, and 32. I mean, to stay sharp, to stay sharp and to stay fit, you have to get rest physically or, I mean, you could, you could actually burn out. But notice what happened in Mark 6 and verse 30. The apostles, they gathered to Jesus and told him all things that they had been doing, both of what they had done and what they had taught. And they have been busy. They have been working. They have been serving. And he said to them, come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. Where there were many coming and going. You ever feel like, you ever get like that where you're just coming and going all day long? Or you're spinning your wheels. And what they do. It's, it's time to, for there are many coming and going and they didn't even have time to eat. And you've probably been there too. You probably got so busy someday that uh, you forgot lunch. 
So they departed to a deserted place in the boat by themselves. Good health. In order to have good service in the Lord's vineyard, you have to take care of yourselves spiritually as well as physically. And then the last thing, um, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So the last thing we need is we need to, need to eat right. And um, John chapter 6, and I remember the men's day a couple years ago, I related this verse. I'm not going to go into it in detail this morning, but I did want to mention it again. In John 6, in verse 26, Jesus said, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. You, you, some people followed after Jesus simply get their belly filled. And, and physically, that was the only thing. But then he says this in verse 27, do not labor for food which perishes, but for food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you. Because God the Father has set his seal upon him. Sometimes we need to just get the doctor's orders that tells us to get off that junk food and eat healthy. And sometimes you do that physically, don't you? So you, you know, I'm going to cut out. I, I cut out ice cream every night at 11 o'clock. used to do that when I was younger. <laughs> every night at 11 o'clock, I'd have ice cream. That's why ice cream last night was such a treat for me. I had, had that, not the homemade stuff. But you got to stop that stuff. And you've got to focus in on the sound and healthy teaching of God's word. There is a bread that abides. There is a bread that endures to everlasting life. So, okay, so you go to the doctor. You ready to go to the doctor? Okay, we've been to the doctor. We got the doctor's orders. You need to build up that immune system. You need to, you know, get regular exercise. And, and, and don't forget, you know, you've got to rest from time to time. And, and you've, got to, you've got to have a good, healthy diet. So we've been to the doctor. We've got the orders. Is that it? Of course not. The doctor expects you to follow through with his instructions. When I go to the doctor, I've been to the doctor. I'll give you one personal thing. He already knows about it, so I'm not, you don't have to worry about this. But he told me some time ago, the doctor wanted me to lose 11 pounds. I mean, my doctor, is a, he's a young guy. He looks younger than, you know, he looks like he's still in high school. And telling me what to do. Uh, but he said, you need to lose 11 pounds. So I go back to the doctor the next time. You know what? That doctor can just take one look at me and knows I didn't do what he said to do. He knows. Our spiritual progress is going to be evident. There's different ways. But my focus here in closing this morning is God knows whether you are taking his prescriptions seriously. Have you been to the doctor lately? The song that Brian is going to lead us in singing, number 50, is have you been to Jesus? Have you been to Jesus for his cleansing power? That's one thing, but the second verse starts out, are you walking daily? Are you walking daily by his side? Are you following his orders? Spiritual health is a lot more important than our physical health. Let's take care of ourselves. Let's do the very best that we can. And if you haven't begun to walk that new life in Christ and enjoy 
every spiritual blessing that's in Christ. If you haven't begun to walk with Jesus hand in hand, to walk in the light as he is in the light, it takes a different mindset. It takes a change of mind. That's repentance. Change of mind, it'll result in a changed life. That's why those earlier people in Acts chapter 2 were told to repent, that's change, and be baptized. And if you're willing to make that change, then you can identify with Christ, be connected with Christ, have your sins washed away, and begin a brand new life in baptism. Sins are washed away, you come forth as a new babe in Christ. And you begin a new Christ-like walk. If you haven't been doing that, it's time to make another change. Turn back. Military terms, about face. Turn back to him. And begin to walk with him again. And make that spiritual progress that's necessary for your well-being. And to make us better prepared and fit for the kingdom of heaven. Have you been to Jesus? As together we stand and as we sing.